move on. Uh, and, and the next question of, uh, affects Dewsbury in particular because of the uh, racial mix-up of, of, uh, of this town, which is, I think, something like 75% white and about 22% or so people of Asian origin. Um, the question's from Marek Hebda, please. Isn't it time that we accepted that in a number of cities in the UK, Racial segregation is a fact of life. And when you say a fact of life, you mean racial segregation is something that one might as well accept and that nothing should be done about or well, that no, attempts that should be made? What, it, what's your view? That it exists. Um, politicians try, perhaps over, over decades, have pretended that, that integration will work. Famously, it was recently said that that's failed. Um, tonight, of course, there's going to be a programme on Channel 4 um, exploring this in Bradford. The fact that we can't really deny it, it exists and it's a fact of life. Okay, and the Prime Minister uh, spoke about it, about a failure to integrate under state multiculturalism. David Starkey, um, you've spoken about this before, what do you think? I think you are right, but I still think it's deplorable. A nation cannot exist without a common core of value. We are trying this extraordinary experiment of being a nation without nationalism. And it seems to me that it's not working. What do you mean by that? Well, literally what I said, David. Well, when, I you look, when you look at the... Well, if you look, for example... Sorry, I don't want to keep on going on about the last Labour government, but they did do an awful lot of things, and especially... You'll upset area. the gentleman in the middle I there upset if you him, do. But I'm quite happy with that. If you look at the Labour government's attempts at defining Britishness, they actually set up a test. It doesn't consist of questions on British history, British lifestyle. It consists of questions like, when are you entitled to benefits? In other words, it is absolutely outside any notion of nationhood. If you look at what the French set up as their equivalent, it's about the revolution, it's about notions of citizenship and, or, and, 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 and whatever. Now, the real problem, I think, is the way in which multiculturalism has worked. The way multiculturalism has worked, and the Race Relations Acts and whatever, I think are totally well-intentioned. But what they've done is deliberately highlight division. Let me give you an example, which is a very interesting one. You probably know I'm gay. We had the case of a group of uh, Islamic men who I think were actually sent sentenced to jail for issuing propaganda which said uh, the Koran says that gays should be executed, which undoubtedly the Koran does. It's fine, you know, as the whole Judeo-Christian Islamic tradition did until the day before yesterday. Right. If I, as a homosexual, then say, I think... Islam is a vile and disgusting religion which has no place in a modern democratic society. I will have a policeman fingering my neck and dragging me off to jail as well. This is absurd. A mature society would have an Islamic preacher or a radical Christian getting up and saying, I think you, David Starkey, and I'm sure the gentleman in the middle there would agree, you know, a disgrace to humanity and should be strung up outside Dewsbury Town Hall. And I would then be able to argue, I think you are an atavistic throwback to the Middle Ages, and although I wouldn't execute you, I would jolly well make sure you had absolutely no rights as a citizen, whatever, because you're not a fit member of a democratic, liberal society. But unless we restore freedom of speech and engagement, what that Channel 4, 4 programme, and I I've seen some previews of it, is about, is getting a group of people who've never talked to each other before to talk to each other, frankly and no holes barred. All right. The, the person and that's what we want. That's the very back there. Yes. John. The, the person in the back there with a the red pullover on. Right, yes. hi there. Um, as a victim liaison officer and a police volunteer, I work within an area of hate crime. And I think attitudes and comments such as Mr. Starkey's do not help the situation. And all that this, these questions do is cause issues around racism and bigotry. And I think we need to have a grown-up and grown-up discussion. In, in your opinion, is racial segregation a fact of life? No, it isn't. It's not a fact of life. Um, what we tend to find is that when individuals are subjected to race hate, they tend to live with individuals from their own background. I think we need to be more welcoming, we need to be more open within society. 
Uh, uh, Clark Carlisle. Yeah, well, this is a very um, pertinent topic for us as an industry because we've had a few high-profile cases of discrimination recently. But going back to Marit's question, I think you have to differentiate between um, racial segregation in communities and racial discrimination, like the lady just talked about at the back. It is a fact of life that there is racial segregation in and amongst our, our country. You can see, by the way, that there are strong communities, um, let's say in Southall, in London, a strong Asian community there, where the majority of the signs there are in Urdu or other Asian languages. That is a fact, and like attracts like. So if you were going to come over to this country, you're more likely to go where there is a, a dense population of people from your own background. That is fact. But that doesn't mean to say that we have to accept that racial discrimination or homophobic discrimination or faith discrimination, Islamophobia of any kind, should be acceptable within our society. There have, there have been fantastic campaigns within football recently to try and break down those barriers, but in light of recent events, we have realised that we've become quite complacent. Um, we do work hard at total inclusion, we do work hard at breaking down the barriers of, of um, racial separation or homophobic discrimination and we want everyone to feel that they have a place within football. But football is reflective of society. We don't create ideas within our industry, we take players from their local community. So race and racial discrimination is a society problem that we have to tackle head on. And there's a real reluctance to even acknowledge the elephant in the room. And it's really getting on my nerves, you know, to... To say, to say that racial discrimination doesn't exist is a lie. It, it happens up and down the country on a daily basis. To say that um, discrimination due to religious, religion or faith doesn't happen is a lie. It happens on a daily basis. And the same with homophobia. What we have to attack is base level language use and opinion. And that means you don't allow children in the playground say, oh, that's so gay, or you're a homo, or oh, you're Jewish this, you're Islamic that. We have to... We have to re-educate our youngsters so that they know what is acceptable. Just like and also, Adam David, Lyle. please let Just me like say Adam before you Lyle. interject, and also we have to engage our um, maturer members of society who might have preconceived ideas into discourse and interaction with the, between the group so okay. that they can learn the similarities between none, one right. another and not focus on the differences. Thank you, Clap. The, the woman here. <laughs> Whilst appreciating the importance of common values, it just strikes me that why do those common values always have to be based on an archaic and abstract concept of Britishness rather than pick from the strength and diversity within our communities because I feel that the difference is something that we should be celebrating whereas the current government seems to want to eradicate all different diversity completely. Well, yeah, what the Prime Minister said. <laughs> What the Prime Minister said was under the doctrine of state multiculturalism we've encouraged different cultures to live separate lives apart from each other and the mainstream. John Redwood, was he right to say that, do you think? Well, he's the Prime Minister, so I'm sure he had every right to say it. But, uh, I didn't say let, let he me, had the right to say it. I said, was he right to say it? Let me say what I would like to say about the subject. Uh, I mean, I loathe racial abuse and, and racial tension, and I think we all need to work endlessly to ensure that people do not use extreme language to inflame extreme opinions. Uh, of course, David Stark is right that a thriving democracy needs strong exchange of opinions on the things that matter and the things we have to decide together. But if you allow that to stray into extreme language, trying to divide people because of what they look like or because of their creed or their race, then I think you have evil on your doorstep and it is very difficult to control it. And I'm glad that there are other people in football who are trying to control it. On the terraces, I think it, it looks dreadful. Uh, we are now uh, a different country from the one we were 30 years ago. Uh, we should take strength from the many different people who have settled here and wish to be part of our community. I do agree with David Starkey that it is up to the cultural leaders and the political leaders to offer a story of our country that we can all unite behind. And I'm very proud of the story of these, these islands and the peoples who settled in them from previous centuries. David tells that story very well. But we need to recognise that the story has moved on in the last 30 or 40 years. We need to be proud of that part of the story as well. Okay. The man there in the third row. 
I don't think there's, I don't think there's any, uh, anything archaic about the idea of Britishness. I think that it, being British has nothing to do with the colour of your skin, your creed or anything. It's just the general idea. And it, might, it might sound a bit of a stereotype, but it's about fair play. It's about queuing. It's about following the rules. It's, it's not... And we shouldn't... Celebrating differences is... It's just the worst thing you can possibly do. We need a cohesive society. We need, well, one, na one nation. <laughs> the, the question uh, from Mark Hebder was that you have to accept that there is racial segregation in a number of cities, Joe Swinson, and the Prime Minister says uh, that the government policy has led to people living apart from each other. In other words, that the, that's the effect of multiculturalism. Do you agree? Well, I think there's certainly the case that in a, a number of cities there are uh, parts of that city and neighbourhoods which uh, are... You know, have a predominance of a particular uh, ethnic group living within them. I think you know we we know that that is the case, and to, to deny that would be strange. But it, it's not perhaps quite such a cause for pessimism as as uh, you know perhaps has been suggested. Because I actually think there's a lot of areas where, despite people living in in particular areas, there's still a lot of integration. I think about Glasgow, where I'm from, and there's a very large uh, and proud Scottish Asian community that that combines very much feeling Scottish with feeling Asian and there will be specific cultural and religious uh, practices that, that are still respected but at the same time when the Glasgow Half Marathon runs through the city you go through the area that's where a lot of Sikh people live and they come out and support it and hand out oranges and it's a, a sort of joyous celebration so I think that you actually can have a lot of that integration I think a lot does happen in schools and that's where part of the difficulty can be where uh, specific concentrations of particular populations means that schooling can become quite segregated and in fact children are born without these kind of prejudices and are just very accepting and so actually it's one of the best ways to try to break down the barriers. I also think sometimes the media doesn't always help because when I speak to, to Muslim friends there's very often a real frustration that the, the very extreme characterization that David has put forward about Islam is the one that uh, carries favor as if that is what all Muslims think. And actually, the voice of mainstream moderate Islam is often not heard. And so I think we need to be careful in our debates as well not to go for that polarization because very often uh, tensions are born out of a fear of the unknown. And if we can have uh, perhaps a more informed and intelligent debate about it, we can break down those right. barriers. The woman on the gang right there. There's a minority of bad people in every community and there's a majority of good people. But like the lady just said, there's always the media's always sort of like influencing on one one culture or one community and that makes the whole of the majority look bad. Like what David Stark has just said, he's picked an example of Islam. You can pick an example of Jewism or Christianity. It's all, you know, every every religion has biasness in it. You cannot always concentrate on one community. But that, there's always going to be segregation because the media actually influences everyone in a big way to think this community is bad. So the communities do segregate. You can't help it, even if you do live in Britain. OK. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that lady. And, and also pay tribute to what Clark has said. I think it's given you know, just such a strong defence of, you know, against discrimination and against bringing people uh, to, together, so I think that's just so important. What about and multiculturalism? Marie, what about the, what the Prime Minister well, said? Well, let me just answer Marie's um, question, because Marie said, uh, is, do we have to accept it as a fact of life? And I think people in the audience have said, in some places, it exists, that segregation. But as the lady at the back said, it doesn't have to be a fact of life. Things don't have to be like that. In my own constituency, um, just up the road in Leeds, uh, the church where I go, a year and a half ago, raised money with a constant for the victims of the floods in Pakistan. This weekend, on Sunday, I'm going to the mosque in my constituency, which has opened up to the whole community to share the culture that, that they have. And the Muslim community, the Sikh community, the Christian community, and people of no faith come together. And I think that's a fantastic example of where racial segregation doesn't exist, and actually people celebrate together what binds us rather than what divides us. And there is so much more. So the Prime Minister was wrong to say you've, we've failed to provide a vision of a well, society to which people feel they can belong. Well, as I said, Marik is right that in some places, Marik is right that in some places, 
racial segregation does exist, but it doesn't have to be like that. I think that there is more that binds us together, and it's better, actually, when we celebrate together what makes us British and what brings us together. And I see that in my community. Jo's spoken about it powerfully, what she sees in Glasgow, and I think that's when we're, we're stronger, whether we come from David, one religion, one I, background, or another. No. We'll go on to another question.